I am beautiful. I know this because Daddy says I'm beautiful. He should. He created me to his own specifications. A combination of body parts from all the women in beauty pageants he's judged and owned. All the women he's fucked and owned. Daddy is rich. Though, not quite as rich as people think. All that glitters is not gold, right? Sometimes it's gold-plated or smudged brass. But Daddy invested in me. He bought me a new nose and chin. My chin used to look like his. That is, I didn't have one. I always delete old photos of myself. I hate that you can see his face in mine just under the surface. I am my father's daughter, though I don't care for the resemblance. Daddy bought me brand new tits and teeth, too. My tits are huge, so are my teeth. Huge and white, and it's a struggle to pull my lips over them as I speak in these modulated tones. Did you know that my voice is what female robots are designed to sound like? It's true. I practiced my voice for hours and hours before trying it out on the public. It's a voice that says, I'm in charge, but only if you say so. It's a GPS voice, reprogrammable at will. Daddy loves me, this I know. I am his favorite, though I don't take great pride in this. There isn't much competition. My little sister is weak and needy. My chinless brother married a fat woman with double chin. Maybe she should give one to my brother. Oh. Me, I married rich, richer than daddy. Sure, I had to convert, <clears throat> but daddy didn't mind. Money knows no religion, marriage is a contract. So I fulfilled my duty quickly and gave birth to two children in three years, a boy and a girl. Even though my babies bear my husband's name, Daddy knows I made them for him. He likes to be surrounded by his children and grandchildren, and I like to please him. That is why I lost the baby weight within a month of both pregnancies. Daddy does not like fat women. Every three weeks, I get my hair, my roots touched up. Daddy likes blondes. My mother's hair is blonde even now in her 60s. Of course, she hasn't been married to Daddy in 30 years. My daughter's hair is dull brown, but she is only six. One day, it will be blonde too. Like the sun at a tropical resort. Like gold. Like chilled butter on a white tablecloth. Butter that remains untouched because I don't eat the bread next to it. <laughs> Blonde hair is powerful. So is the restraint it takes not to eat the bread. <laughs> Power and wealth means having access to everything, but refusing most of it. <laughs> Daddy likes powerful women. That's why he gave me the money to start my own fashion business. It wasn't a hard sell. He's always giving me what I want. Daddy, buy me a pony. Daddy, buy me a car. Daddy, I want to be a model. Daddy, I want to be a fashion designer. Daddy, I want an office in the White House. If I actually ate bread, I'd know which side it was buttered on. <laughs> so I designed the clothes that he likes to see on women form-fitting dresses and high heels. Women should look like women, like the woman's side on a bathroom. Yes, she's in a dress for a reason. No one wants to enter the wrong door. There are rules. <laughs> <laughs> the women who buy my clothes want my life. They mostly buy them from ugly strip malls. They believe that buying my clothes gives them access to my life. My clothes are tried on by hundreds of women, office workers, teachers, housewives. By the time a dress is purchased, it's been covered with deodorant stains, lipsticks, mirrors, fingerprints, and strands of unwashed hair. 
I don't know these women. They think they know me. They think I'm classy, not knowing that I would never use that word. That's fine. That's my appeal. I know the power of keeping quiet. Silent like a mannequin in a department store, waiting to be dressed in this season's new ideas. People project whatever they want on me. I am sweet. I am wise. I am witty. I love children and working mothers and giving blowjobs. <laughs> People think I whisper sound advice to daddy in private, although there is no evidence of this. My soft breath in his ear, a moral compass, his conscience guiding him away from rash decisions and red buttons. <laughs> That's me, Jiminy fucking cricket with huge tits and big teeth. <laughs> it's a pretty picture. So I don't need to provide proof of my good intentions. People need to believe in me and that's enough. What they don't know is that no one can reach Daddy. Have you ever really actually looked into his eyes? Well, have you? Because if you did, you'd understand. Yes, I know he loves me in his own way. When people ask what I think about his sexist attitudes, I, I don't really know how to respond. He cannot change. He says sexual things about me and pats my ass because that's the only way he views women. Like the sign on the bathroom, there is only one image. Are you fuckable or not? I am 36 years old. I am one year older than daddy's expiration date for women. He is a businessman and beauty is a useful commodity, like oil or cattle. It has value that d diminishes year by year. Women my age are traded in for a younger model. So I know that he is cheating on my stepmother, who is six years older than me. But I don't care about her. She's a gold-digging whore. But she's not stupid. She's a businesswoman, too. She had to know this was coming, no matter how much yoga or trips to the plastic surgeon she does. This was the deal she made. The only part that bothers me is that Daddy is fucking my friend Faith. It's funny that her name is Faith. Daddy was elected president on faith, not experience. Voters believed in him, in the power of our family name, hoping some luck would rub off on them like a cheap ring that turns your finger green. Now the faithful are getting fucked while Daddy is fucking faith in the White House. <laughs> it's comical. He never had any intention of helping them. He just liked hearing them shout his name just like my friend Faith. Oh. A sea of faithful voters waiting to be told what to believe by a man who has no fixed beliefs. But I don't care. That's their problem. You can't help people who are too stupid to leave their sad little towns with no jobs. There's no water in that well, no matter how thirsty you are, and I am not here to quench that thirst. It's not that I dislike them. I simply don't think about them. Not like my friend Faith. I think about her a lot, and I've started to hate her. <laughs> Faith is 11 years younger than me. She has 11 years more currency than I do. She hasn't started looking for signs of aging in the mirror yet, examining cosmetic tubes and jars, squinting at fine print, rubbing fine lines, hoping for miracles, wondering when the power of beauty will diminish, when the value will decrease. Fuck faith. Daddy used to look at me the way he looks at her. But since I started having my husband's babies, he hasn't looked at me like that at all. Not since my value began to decline and my ass began to drop. That's okay, because I will win in the end. I have Daddy's name by birth, and no one can take that from me. It's a power that Faith will never have. I am his brand, and one day when Daddy is dead, 
I will inherit the biggest chunk of his inheritance. I have made sure of this. It is the only request that I actually have whispered into his ear and made sure pen was put to paper. One day I will stand by Daddy's coffin, grieving with elegance, just like Jackie Kennedy. I will not be hysterical. I will delicately dab my eyes with a pretty handkerchief. No snot will run out of my nose and onto my glossy lips. I will give the public what they want and no more. That is the deal. I will look beautiful in a black dress that I have designed. Cameras will flash. Sales will skyrocket. <laughs> and as for me, I will win. Just wait and see.